Hello, this video is intended for programmers. You should understand what is ASCII, ANSI, and code page after this video. Let's start with ASCII. ASCII says that one character has seven bit, which means that one character consists of numbers from zero to 127. So we, one number, right? But then people started to notice, wait, 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 one byte, we're using one byte for one character and one byte actually has eight bit, right? That means we have the numbers 128 to 200, 55 that are not used yet to make a small drawing let's say these are all numbers from 0 to 255 and the top ones are the ASCII characters but the bottom ones well they are not used right they're not defined and people said well why not define them and then well I think it was IBM said well let's define them as like strokes like pipes right uh, we want to have pipes to be able to draw uh, rectangles in our console to make windows in our console right but the Greeks said, well, yeah, well, windows in the console are nice, but actually we're more interested in, in writing our own letters, right? That would be nice. And then, I don't know, maybe the Germans said, well, we want to have the umlaut, how you say that in English, actually. We want that stuff, right? And another country said, well, we want this stuff. And another country said, we want this stuff. And the same other country said, well, actually, we want two different ways of how to express this stuff. And then we had a problem because we had a mess. If the Greeks created a document and sent it to, let's say, IBM, and IBM defined these characters, well, then the document was kind of scrambled, right? Instead of these characters, these were shown, which was not nice. So the ANSI, ANSI? ANSI standard came along, which didn't really change anything per se. It just said, well, what we have should be defined better. So the ANSI standard says that, well, the first 128 characters, well, they are fixed, right? This is like the, the typical English characters, but the rest of the characters are basically like freely chosen, but we have to like identify them, right? So we say this IBM stuff, for example, um, receives the number three, right? The number itself is uh, not the real number, but the concept is correct. And well, the Greek stuff, the, the, the thing that the Greeks thought up, uh, well, they, they get the number four and the Germans, well, they get number five and well, this country gets number six and this country gets number seven. And I think you get the idea. This country gets number eight. And now if the Greeks send a document to IBM, they said, well, wait, IBM, you cannot use like your three thingy here. You have to use our four thingy here, right? So you have, we could now, we were now able to say, well, don't use your signs or those signs, but use our signs. And this four, five, three, six, seven, eight, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's a code page. So a code page is basically a fancy word for, well, the definition of how these numbers here should be represented on your computer. So for example, this would be code page three, code page four, code page five, six, seven, eight. And there are many, 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 many code pages. That was so fine so far, but it has some failures, some problems. So we wanted to have something that could express all characters in the universe or at least on planet Earth. And so we invented Unicode. And for Unicode, I have a different video. So check out the video description. Thanks for watching.